Long gone are the days where you have to find all of these trading pairs and add them manually into a watch list or sorting them by their last price, their change, all this stuff that you're limited to here on TradingView. Now with the screener that's been updated, we can do so much more. We're going to be going over everything you need to know in the new TradingView screener in today's video. But before we do, hit the like button, subscribe, let's get into it. Now I have a brand new screener right here. And the way that we go over to crypto is we want to go down here to this option, sex screener. Yes, there's sex and dexes. Sexes are centralized exchanges. Dexes are decentralized exchanges. So we can actually screen for decentralized coins or rather, yeah, price action based off of whatever these metrics are. But we're going to stick here to the sex screener. Now we want to focus first on a specific exchange. I really like trading with Bybit right now. So I'm going to click buy a bit. And now we can go into some really cool stuff. For one, we can choose our symbol type. We were not able to do this just six months ago, which is awesome. So now I can actually switch between the spot market, which reduces our total symbol market uh, count or symbol. Yeah, our symbol count down for like 1,200 to 653. So we already chop off 600 trading pairs we don't need to see. And it gets better. We can actually sort by our quote currency. Our quote currency and our base currency are terms that most of you are not probably familiar with because most of you are just used to trading on USD markets from the stock market. But in, when it comes to trading in crypto, we have a base currency right here. BTC is the base currency and USDT is the quote currency. Sometimes it's also called the market currency, but this is great because now we can actually filter out all the noise and only focus on the markets that we're interested in trading. For example, if we're only going to be trading perps, then of course we can take this out because perps are always going to be in USD. Oh, never mind. I'm wrong. Look at that. USDP, USDCP. So let's say I want to do uh, USDC like this. Now we only have 37 available symbols to trade. So if I'm limited or limiting myself to the USDC market for the perpetuals market on Bybit, I can do that. Now we're going to be going back to using USDT on the spot market for a very good reason, because I like building watch lists. I do it every single month for the Better Traders Club where I curate watch lists. And I'm going to be honest, I look at over 1000 tickers every single month across multiple exchanges, and it is a nightmare doing it. But I also identify some amazing setups. And this is actually going to be changing the way that I work and I find my setups because this is incredible. I haven't even gotten started yet. For one, we already have a couple of amazing options that are set here. There's just this simple built-in overview, which let me go ahead and just bring this out so we can see everything. So one thing I hate about this, and I know that there's a way to collapse it and actually make it fit inside of here. Uh, so it's just part of TradingView, but for some reason it's not working right now. But this slide out accordion window right here is great because I can go ahead and just click on one of these guys and I can instantly bring up the screen. That's great. That's cool and all. But what's really great about this is that I can find an existing watch list. Like if I want to go to my master USD watch list, it's going to have everything that's there that fits this criteria. So now I can sift through all of these that fit the criteria of my master USD list. Or if I only want to look and see what's on Coinbase, then I'm going to take this out and I want to also choose USD. So now I have Bybit and Coinbase, USD and USDT pairs. So this way I'm looking at everything that's available to me, which is really, really cool to be honest. So now I have the ability to sift through a lot of information, either by exchange, I can sort it by price. I can also sort by the change in the volume, all that fun stuff based off of my master USD watch list that's already done. Now I want to start first by not getting too confusing just yet, we're just going to stick with one exchange and one market because I want to show you the other cool stuff that's here. So all of these different parameters, these different columns here allow us to sort and to, to filter out information, which is cool. So we can sort by the change last 24 hours. So we can find charts that are pumping or potentially dumping. We can sort by volume. We can sort by volume change. There's actually more stuff. And this is what was available in the previous scanner. Let me go ahead and move my face over. Uh, <laughs> and we can find a bunch of stuff like we can find uh, MACD, we can find RSI, we can find uh, momentum, we could find uh, if we just type in percentage, like there's a ton of different percentage stuff, which is cool. So we can find anything that we want. 
and we can say uh, performance change. Cool, year to date, no, we wanna do one week, add a column, boom, done. So this is great because now we can also sort to see which ones are really winning right now. So if we go to AFG, apparently it's winning. Let's see. I, I don't even know. Yikes. Okay. That one is definitely winning because it's massively pumping right now. So this is absolutely accurate. The last week it's up 240%. XO on Bybit. This is a new listing, but yes, it has a lot of volatility. Uh, let's look at HFT. Yeah, there's a massive pump. So this is great to identify charts that have recently pumped. We could flip the script and find out charts that are really down, that have dumped Sun, Brawl, Stream, whoa, whoa, wee, whoa, and Hulg, and them. Actually, this is Neb, Rail Blocks, I believe it used to be. So this is really cool that we can be able to do this, but it gets better. So let's go back to the overview, because I want to show you something up here. We have even more drop downs that are available to us. When I click on change, we already have some default settings. So like I want to find out charts that are 30% and above in their change. These are charts that have had a huge change over the last 24 hours, most likely going to be pumps, but not always pumps. Sometimes they're dumps. But CBK has pumped, SCA has pumped, H has pumped. Wait a second, CBK this is one that was on my watch list. I'm not kidding. I'm fairly certain this was. Let me just double check. Watch list. Yep, it's on the July watch list that I literally just shared on Monday. And it just pumped. Good for them. Holy crap. <laughs> I didn't even know that. That's hilarious. But anyway, this is why this is so cool because now I can use my watch list and I can also use all of these settings, which is really cool. But notice up here, it's showing me everything that's greater than 30%. Well, guess what? I can go into the manual setup and I can get more nitpicky with this. I can say, and this is where things get great. Yes, above is good, but I actually want to find out what charts are doing well that are from 10% up to 30% in their change. Now I'm going to see a nice range and this is great because I don't want to identify charts that have had a massive, massive change just yet, but maybe charts that are setting up for a change. Maybe there's been some volatility. Maybe there's been something interesting. And now you can see the power in this because now I can start layering this in with our volume change. Yes, I want to apply those changes. So now I'm looking at these two to find out good settings for both of them. I want to see which charts have seen an increase in volume and have had a positive change over the last 24 hours. This could be a great way to identify a bottom bounce that could be happening. It's already amazing, right? So the only problem with this is that if I go to change 24 hours, notice how I clicked on this and I can go to manual setup right here, which is great. If I do like a right click or a secondary click here and I go to column settings, it doesn't give me the same options, which is kind of a bummer. So I think that's just a glitch on their end, but whatever. Um, so we can do that same thing with all these other drop downs. So I imagine if I go over here to uh, volume change, there we go, volume change, percentage, add filter. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose the manual setup. And now I can do all of the fun stuff that I just did before. So I don't want to look at anything that has a negative volume change. I want to look at everything above, actually, this is really easy, everything above 10%. So it's going to get rid of purse, which is great. So now I'm looking at everything that has a positive volume change over the last 24 hours and everything that has a positive change in price over the last 24 hours. And yes, Pengu is one of them. Looks, STX, spec. Now these are not all charts that are mooning yet. Yeah, and we can actually get into that as well. We could say, well, I want to get rid of all this stuff. I don't want necessarily the tech rating. That's not really helpful. Volume is helpful. We're going to leave that in. But what I want to find next is we want to find out a moving average. Here we go. Exponential moving average. Sure. Let's just do moving averages rating. Mm, let's just do exponential moving average. So we're going to use the 50. Sure. That's fine. Now, Let's see if we can add this to the top. We're going to go to EMA, exponential moving average, add the filter, cool beans. And now we're going to say manual setup. Now we want to make sure that it's above or equal a specific value, but we could also say that it's above the price. We want to make sure that, um, let's see, the price right here. And we want to make sure that it is below the price. This would indicate a chart that is in a strong uptrend, DBR and Pengu are both in strong uptrends. Do you get it? And do you get why? If we put a 50 EMA here, and we're going to go ahead and hide this for a second, I want to show you what the logic is here, because sometimes the logic can be a little bit uh, confusing. So we're going to use a 50 EMA. 
and we can see that the price is clearly above that 50 EMA. So see how this is working? This is actually working for us to identify charts that are in a strong uptrend. And instead of looking at all 600 pairs, we have we have essentially whittled this down not to 1,200 or 1,200 pairs, not 600 pairs. Now it's just two. This is awesome. And what's really cool about this as well is that I can say, well, I want this to auto refresh every minute. So if something does change, if the price suddenly goes up, then it's going to make a big difference. Now, we can also say stuff like this. Well, we're looking at the daily time frame right now. What about the hourly time frame? Oh, yeah. No, we can 100% do that. We could switch to the hourly time frame and we can find out which charts are actually above the moving average. And we're going to go ahead and refresh this. And look at that. So we have the same charts that are doing really, really well. Both Pengu and DBR are both above their 50 period moving averages on the hourly time frame. So it all checks out. Now, you can imagine how dizzying this can be. So I want to give you some good advice on what things to look out for when you're doing this. Now, for one, I have a custom set that's right here. I've already made a lot of changes. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this screen. Now, of course, I can let this continue to update. There is no, unfortunately, there is no way for this to alert me when there's a new pair added, but it is helpful at least to filter out all of the noise. But let's say that I like these two. I want these to be on my watch list. These are ones I'm going to be trading a lot today. I'm going to go ahead and click and then shift click to select both of these. And I'm going to add both of these to a new watch list that is for my intraday scalping, scalping, watch list that I'm making here. So now I'm going to go over here to intraday scalping. Boom, there we go. So now I have access to both of these charts that's meeting my conditions of the EMA. And then if you have the paid version of trading view, which you have to pay a little bit more for, but you can actually create an alert on this, which is pretty amazing. I'm going to show you up here. You can create an alert based off of a watch list. Now, this is where you have to pay a little bit more. It's a little bit frustrating, um, but you can. So based off of different conditions like the TBO, which I have access to. So when the TBO prints a close short, then I want to know when that happens once per bar. Same as chart one hour. Awesome. So anytime a close short fires on one of these guys, I'm going to know right away. And better yet, I could set up a webhook notification to tell all tradey for these two specific trades or these two sorry, these two specific markets to open up a new position because I know these charts are in a strong uptrend. Do you kind of get the power here? I know it's really dizzying, but the main thing that I really enjoy about this is the ability now to hyper-focus down my watch list so that I'm focusing on the big movers of the day. Now, there's no right or wrong way to use this, but there are just tons of different ideas. And I want you to leave a comment down below letting me know what factors you pay attention to. Are you more of a MACD guy or gal? Do you care more about RSI, CCI? Do you care about exponential moving averages? Do you care more about volume? Or what about all the other technicals? Like there's so many options on here. It's incredible. But honestly, focusing on change over the last 24 hours, focusing on volume, even focusing on a moving average, that's where it's at in my opinion. But let me know what you think down below. And until the next time, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.